Hey everyone. So in the last year or so of quantum mechanics, we've learned a lot about what happens with the time independent Schrodinger equation. And so we haven't really worried too much about time evolution because we've been looking at stationary states. And once you've extracted the stationary states, they don't evolve in time except for some phase factor, which doesn't really matter. So in the next few lectures, we're going to be talking about time dependent Schrodinger equation and time evolution of states and also what happens if you have a time dependent perturbation or a time dependent Hamiltonian. So to begin with, we're going to think about what happens in the case of a time dependent Schrodinger equation for non stationary states. So we'll start with the eigenstates, which are the stationary states, and they're going to be the basis from which we form our non-stationary states. And so our time evolving state, which is going to be psi as a function of t, note that there's no subscript here, so this is not one of the eigenstates. Nonetheless, we can express this wave function, which evolves in time, as a sum over the eigenstates, but with time-dependent coefficients. Okay, so that's the wave function and how we're going to express it. And how does the wave function psi evolve? Well, we know this from the time dependent Schrodinger equation. The evolution of the wave function phi, psi is determined by the Hamiltonian H. And remember for the time being, H is not time dependent. We'll deal with time dependent Hamiltonians in a later video. Now we're going to expand the wave function over the uh, psi n, the eigenfunctions. Now, the time derivative of psi is turned into a time derivative over the coefficients because the eigenfunctions themselves are time independent. They're just functions. They're just the basis that we're using. But the coefficients cn, they are time dependent. They're time varying. And so the cn dot means dc dt. H psi when we expand it, we can apply the h to each one of the uh, eigenfunctions separately and pull out the factor en. Now from this equation, we can multiply it by we multiply it by psi m with the bra and integrate it. This is a trick that we're using over and over and over again. Uh, in perturbation theory, for example. And it gives us... And now we remember that we made all of the psi n orthonormal. So psi n, psi m are orthogonal to each other unless m equals n. So from all of the terms on the left-hand side, the only one which is going to be non-zero is when n is equal to m. So all we're left with on the left-hand side is I H bar C M dot. All the other terms in the sum are zero. And on the right-hand side, very similar effect. Uh, the only term which is non-zero is when M equals N. And so we have one term picked out, C M E M. And so this is very close to our evolution equation. We see that cm dot, which is just to cm dt, I'll put it in here again, is equal to minus i e m over h bar times cm itself. I'll put a little t there just to show that, to remind us that it's a function of time. And this uh, differential equation, very simple, 
uh, has a very simple solution, which is CM equals the boundary condition CM naught times e to the minus i e m t over h bar. Therefore, we can write the final wave function as psi of t is equal to the sum over n of cn naught, which is just the boundary condition, minus i e n t over h bar, which is how the coefficient evolves in time, times psi n, which does not depend on time. So we can see that the entirety of the time evolution is caught up in that one phase factor, e to the minus i e n t over h bar. There is no other time dependence on the right hand side. That is, each component evolves separately according to its eigenvalue e n. So let's do an example now. And for my example, I'm going to choose my favorite problem, the in infinite square well. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a infinite square well minus a over 2 to a over 2. And we're going to start with a wave function which is not in a stationary state, something that looks like this. Note that the left-hand side is like it's not crossing at zero here. That's the idea. This initial condition is something more complicated. In a minute, we'll write down all of the eigenstates and we will see that, I mean, you'll see that this wave function is not one of them. So the question would be then, how does this wave function evolve? What's the wave function at time t? So the first thing we're going to have to do is express uh, psi in terms of the eigenfunctions. The eigenfunctions are, for odd values of n, you have the even functions, and for even n, you've got odd functions and the energies are given by en equals h bar squared pi squared over 2m a squared times n squared okay so the first thing we're going to have to do is express our wave function in terms of these eigenfunctions So for the moment, we're just going to do it by construction, but we'll just note at the end that uh, how you could do it in a sort of more systematic way. So psi t equals zero equals square root one over a. And we're just going to expand out the sign, the second term here. So we'll have cos pi x over a minus two sine pi x over a cos pi x over a. So this is a really simple case. We can just sort of wing our way through it here. And we do that by using the uh, double angle formula. We see that sine of 2 pi x over a can be written as 2 sine pi x on a cos pi x on a and so we can do it the opposite direction and that means that we're going to have square root 1 over 2 times the first one which is psi 1 right cos pi x on a is when n equals 1 and the second term is sine 2 pi x on a which is nothing but psi 2 
And so that is the wave function at time t equals zero. Um, and then we would write psi at time t is equal to one over root two e to the minus i e one, oops, e one t over h bar psi one minus one over root two e to the minus i e two t over h bar psi two. So again, each part of it, each term uh, is evolving according to its own eigenvalue, e one or e two respectively. And in this case, we could just do it by construction. You could sort of see the answer, but you could also do it a more systematic way. And the more systematic way would be would be to do an integral to get the coefficients. So cn at time t equals zero would be equal to the integral of psi n star times psi at time t equals zero dx. See if you can prove that statement. Last thing is a bit of homework, and this is a particularly challenging task, and if you get stuck, don't worry about it too much, but you might wanna find the solution on the internet of something if you get stuck. Um, this is definitely on the, on the challenging side. So we've got a Gaussian wave packet, which looks something like this. You've got a wave function like this, psi of x equals a e to the minus alpha x squared, where a and alpha are constants. And we want to know how this spreads out over time. So over time, um, the alpha will change and it will spread out. So this is very challenging. Um, my hint is that what you want to do is write the wave function in terms of the eigenfunctions, which are traveling waves. And the traveling waves are with eigenvalue p, e to the i, p dot x. p can be positive or negative. So you write expand psi out in terms of the traveling waves. Um, those momentum eigenstates don't change, just the coefficients do. And so you can uh, see how psi evolves in time. Uh, again, this is challenging. And that's it for this lecture.